to another edition of the Coach's Corner. Uh, we're here at the Tivoli Tap House, where you can enjoy great food and some great beer, too. <laughs> um, my name is Hector Cervantes, alongside Colton, Cla uh, sorry, Colton Lash. Hi, buddy. Hey, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. How was your weekend, bro? I had such a good weekend, man. I uh, got to go to a little barbecue with some old coworkers of mine. We just hung out. And college football's back, so I'm excited. We watched a little bit of the Miami Hurricanes, Florida Gators game. It was awesome. So uh, sports are about to come back full swing. I'm excited. That's great, bro. So what do we have in store today? So first, we're gonna we'll get to know our brand new cross country coach, Nick Lara, who has an impressive resume and is already off and running with the team. The volleyball regular season is almost here, so we have to bring on head coach Jenny Glenn, who begins her fourth season in downtown Denver. And sticking with the volleyball team, the lone senior on this year's squad is Alyssa Kelling, and she'll tell us how she's leading Team 51 in 2019. Well, that sounds like a great show ahead of us, right? But before we get it started, um, let's catch up on some Roadrunner news, shall we? Let's do it. All right. So this past week, our athletics departments announced the 2019 Hall of Fame. Three individuals and a team will be inducted into this year's class. Nancy Kugel, Stephanie Allison, Stephen Emery, and the 2007 men's soccer team will have their names called on October 5th. The, the ceremony will take place on the, sp on the Spring Hill suits starting at 7 p.m. Check out our roadrunnersathletics.com for more information. Let's, Hector, let's check in on some RMAC preseason rankings. All right. Both of our cross country teams are picked to finish seventh in the preseason poll, which are voted on by the coaches. The women's team is led by Alden Grudel and Vanessa Court, while the men are led by Sam Berg and Jacob Lane. We'll talk with Coach Lara in just a few minutes about how his cross country teams are doing. All right, great. And finally, we give our big shout out to a former men's basketball star, Nick Kay, who helped the Australian national team defeat the United, United States squad this last Friday. It was a qualifying match for the, B, the FIBA World Championship. And Kay, who is a former All-American for our men's basketball team, scored seven points in the 98-94 upset. It was the first time the Australian team has ever defeated the U.S. squad in 26 games. Well, that's a great job, right? Great job, Nick. Um, we'll, keep, we'll keep you up to date with Kay's progress in the FIBA championship. So we now welcome Nick Lara. How's Hello. it going, guys? Thanks for having me. Nick, how's it going? Appreciate it. Thanks for so, going well. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so you're the new brand uh, cross country head coach. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell us why you applied here and what was the first thoughts that came once you got the job? The um, reason I applied is I just thought, you know, I've watched Metro from afar for a long period of time and I thought it was just an undiscovered gem. And so um, that's kind of the reason I applied. And then I was ecstatic to finally get the position, you know, something that I probably wanted for a few years now. And um, so getting it's like a, almost like a dream come true a little bit. That's great. Awesome. Uh, so Nick, question for you. What did you, what do you know about MSU Denver before coming here and what kind of potential did you see in the cross country program? Yeah, so um, I followed, you know, MSU Denver for a long period of time because I was an athlete in the RMAC, um, ran at Adams State College. And then um, I had the pleasure of watching uh, one of your guys' first national champions, uh, Anthony Luna, um, as an athlete. And so I thought it, um, you know, it was one of those things that how could you pass up on an opportunity to run for a program right in, right in the heart of downtown Denver, right? I mean, the skyline's right there, so it's, it's one of those things that I just thought would be a pretty cool thing. You picked a good choice on the city. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can't beat Denver right now, you know, number one market in the country, so <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good place to be. For yeah. sure. Yeah, that's great. So uh, we know that you were the head coach at Johnson Wales program, and you built that program from scratch, basically. So tell us a little bit about what you did there, what you learned, and what you can bring from there to here. Yeah, so, you know, Johnson Wales was an inaugural track program when I took over. Um, we had zero athletes when I showed up on campus, obviously, and so um, had to work on really finding the right kid that fit that um, institution. Um, it's a culinary school that costs about almost about $40,000 a year to go through. Um, and so, you know, learning how to recruit specific kids to those type of universities was big, right? Um, MSU Denver is one of those schools that is in downtown Denver. It's kind of like you're not traditional college almost a little bit. Um, 
and so you know Johnson Wells helped me learn to find the right kids that might fit this type of program as well you know because it is a little bit different but it's really unique you know I think that's one thing that uh, MSU has going for it is that it's, it's unique you get the the live atmosphere of the city um, there's so many things to do within the city and so um, I think being at Johnson Wells that allowed me to really um, find the right kids you know for sure so you had quite the decorated running career at Adams State, a perennial powerhouse in both cross country and track and field in Division II. You were a 13-time All-American as a Grizzly. What was it like running for such a prestigious program? Um, it was awesome. You know, I, I lived, I grew up in Alamosa, so I've watched that program for many, many years as a little kid. Um, so being able to represent my hometown and the hometown college was was something that I, I always wanted to do. So, um, yeah, it, you know, being with a successful program, you have that expectation to come in there and try to win things. And, you know, All-American, that, that's kind of the standard. Um, you know, and so hopefully I'm able to bring, translate some of that and bring it, bring it on over to MSU now, so. Yep. That's great. Yeah, so uh, you trained under the legendary coach, uh, Damon Martin mm -hmm. at uh, ASU, yep. right? Right. Um, so my facts aren't wrong, right? No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> That's great. You're right. Uh, so what are some things that you learned from him that you're going to bring here downtown Denver? Yeah, uh, you know, Coach Martin's a really good motivator. Um, at the end of the day, I think that's probably his best attribute is that he's able to motivate the kids, and that's something that I've really focused on picking up on over my uh, career as a coach, of being able to relate to lots of different student athletes, you know, from different demographics. Um, so, you know, being able to learn from him firsthand as a student athlete and then, you know, working under him for a couple of years was, was huge for me. So I would say that hopefully, above all things, that I am able to motivate our athletes to go out there and compete to their fullest extent. Awesome. So you've gotten to know the team a little bit on the men's side. Who are some, some people that might stand out to you this season or some leaders on the team so sure. far? Um, so obviously, you know, some of the uh, returners, you know, Sam Berg is somebody that's going to be a standout for us. Um, he's, you know, probably the top runner coming into the year. Um, Jake Link is another kid that could do something for us. Um, and then we got some pretty good freshmen and, and some young guys, you know. Um, Ruben is another kid that could really do something for us and then um, some of the new freshmen like uh, we call him Yoni he's gonna do something he's a pretty special talent um, from Denver South and I think he's got really good potential and then um, another freshman by the name of Jaden uh, he's from Parker and he has a lot of great potential so those are kind of the kids I'm looking forward to really helping turn this thing around that's great how about on the women's side on the, yeah on the women's side I think uh, Alden is, is going to be a really good um, person for us. You know, we lost a lot of depth uh, after last year's national meet. Um, and so I, I look to her for the leadership. Um, we do have some young pieces that are going to probably move along. Um, McKenna's will be someone that um, I hope to really nurture and help her grow as an athlete. Um, but yeah, I think overall the women's team is fairly young and um, I think we'll continue to grow throughout the season and hopefully that, you know, leads us to a national, uh, national qualifying marks. Great. So uh, when is your first meet and what are you looking forward to that? Yeah, so the first couple of meets, I just want to get in there and try to get our feet wet. Um, it's been, you know, they've been through what now, a couple of coaches now um, before me. And so I, want, I just want to get in there and compete and get our feet wet a little bit and just kind of get familiar with the racing and racing strategy. Um, so our first meet will be down in Colorado Springs at the Rust Buster, um, hosted by, I think it's Colorado College. And uh, hopefully we can go down there and put up some good marks. So that'll be our first meet of the year. That's great. So, Coach, thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate it. We're going to stop bombarding no you with questions. No worries. You guys, you guys are <laughs> and good. we look forward to seeing your yeah, squad we'll in We'll see action. you guys again soon. All right. Thank you. <laughs> great. So, it's that time of the show that we bring you our t tweet of the week. So, it comes from our main athletic account where one of our photographers got this great picture from the women's soccer exhibition match last Friday. Well, we're going to have a little break right now. But we'll come right back. In the heart of the city, Metropolitan State University of Denver is holding the line on the American dream. Our students come from every background and experience. They are tenacious, purposeful, entrepreneurial. They choose the highest quality and best value in Colorado higher education, and they choose their own roads from more than 70 undergrad and graduate degrees. Relevant? 
hands-on and affordable education. Discover your road to success at msudenver.edu. Let's go! Watch out and in! The Roadrunners have responded! Kendall McIntosh throwing it down! Welcome back. And before we talk with Coach Glenn, we want to remind you to mark those calendars for September 6th when the Top House will be hosting their fourth anniversary party from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. It's absolutely free and open to the public. There will be live music, a stain holding competition, food, and exclusive release from the Tivoli Brewing Company. Make sure to visit TivoliBrewingCo.com for more information. It's going to be a great time and you don't want to miss any of it. So now we say hello to a fourth uh, fourth head coach volleyball. Yeah. <laughs> hello, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Hey, good to see you. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm Hector, and I'm this Colton. is my buddy Colt. Buddy Colton. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sir. And uh, so, so tell us, you know, we've been wondering behind the scenes, what's your life been like since last year? You won the Roadrunners Trivia Championship. You know, there must be something going on there, like all paparazzis, everything, the big prize. It's What's it been like? Pretty big deal. That ice cream I won was a pretty big deal. I know. I just have to, you know, be, be careful where I go and watch out for those paparazzi. But That's, yeah. Yeah, of course. And no worries. You'll get a, a, you'll get a chance today to compete in the trivia again. I'm pumped. To hold for that it. position. I know. I'm a little nervous. I got to defend my title. That's great. <laughs> Okay, so let's see what we got. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. So you were telling our own Eric Lansing that the young guns have done pretty well so far in practices and exhibits and matches. Is it more important at this point for the newbies to be calm and collective, or is it more important to get their technique and form in the right state? Yeah, we do have six newbies in the gym and seven returners. So it's been a really fun first part of the year. Lots of learning happening, lots of teaching happening. And, um, you know, it's we're trying to create a great foundation. So if we can create a great foundation with these newbies, it's a good review for our returners as well. Um, and that's the critical piece. We can build throughout the year. We need to be patient in that process. But we also have a lot of returners that have been part of our program for multiple years and are ready to hit the ground running. So we've been having to balance a little bit between the two, catching the newbies up to speed, but also really progressing our returners. Awesome. So does it scare you to only have one returning senior? Doesn't scare me. Yeah. Alyssa Cullen can handle it. She's <laughs> she's pretty solid and consistent and veteran in multiple ways. So, you know, to have her kind of leading the pack, it makes me really confident. And, and you know, we have a great group of juniors and um, sophomores as well. So they've done a lot of work in the off season to prepare for this kind of balanced team and newbies and returners, and I think they've done a great job. So what are your expectations for Alice, uh, Alisa? Alisa. Alisa? <laughs> well, just like I said, I expect her to be the steady one. You know, a fifth-year senior, been in the program for a long time, um, to be consistent day in and day out in her leadership and in her execution, which she is. And that's one of her greatest strengths, is her ability to be consistent. So some fans are probably wondering who's going to be scoring points for you this year. You lose your top three hitters from last year's squad, so who will be racking up the kills for Team 51? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> All of them? You know, we, we hope to run a balanced offense. I think we'll be experienced in the middle with Alyssa Kellyn back and having some experienced middles coming back. Um, so we'll, we hope to score points there, but we also have pin hitters that have played on the floor before, just in a different position. So I think that we, you know, our offense will look different this year, but I think we can score at all three positions. Yeah, great. So our boss, Eric Lansing over there. Yeah. In Alley, mm -hmm. So he was telling us that this morning you guys in practice were having a great time laughing, having cracking jokes, you know. <laughs> so how does that go about? Uh, do you think this could potentially connect the players on the field, the chemistry and everything? Yeah, this group is really united. They're just, they've worked really hard to get to know each other and they're super competitive. So when we're on the floor together, we're usually having fun. There's not, there's moments that aren't so jovial, but overall um, there's a great energy in the gym and, and a lot of uni unity and it's fun to be in practice right now. That's great. 
So with so many players gone from last year's squad, it means that there's some openings and that leads to good competition for those spots. Do you see that competition taking place on the court? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, our newbies have come in and done a great job and our returners are going to have to continue to battle for their positions. There's, you know, the lineup isn't set even as we speak today. So they're consistently battling for those positions and it, that just grazes the level of the gym as a whole, you know, and I hope that it's that way throughout the course of the entire season. Great. So speaking of the court, our gym will be hosting the Division II National Championships in December. What does that mean for the program, the university, and how excited should the fans be to such high competition in the Mile High City? Yeah, it's awesome for our sport. It's awesome for our city. It's awesome for D2 athletics around here. So we're trying to get the word out. We get a lot of, you know, Colorado is a great volleyball state and uh, there's a lot of volleyball fans, a lot of volleyball players. So we're trying to get the word out to get as many people here as we can. It's great opportunity to showcase MSU Denver and the changes over the years and get people on our campus and and be able to host that that kind of level is is incredible. That's great. All right, Coach Show, we'll give you a chance for the trivia, as we said, mentioned. Okay. I'm and ready. You're ready? I hope. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. So it's going to be a multiple choice question, and it's brought to you by Rob White. By Rob White. Uh-oh. He's here somewhere. There he is. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you're ready? Yep. I'm sure. I'm positive. Okay. So uh, which of the Roadrunners holds the record for the highest blocks per set as a freshman in program history? I'll give you three options. Okay. Okay. So number eight, is it Alisa Kelly? Is it B, Heidi Kayes? Or is it C, Stephanie Larawe? As a freshman, as a freshman. what was B? B is Heidi Kayes. As a redshirt freshman or as a freshman? As a freshman. As a freshman. First year playing. Oh, Elsa Kelly. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> that, that was correct. a good one to go with, you know. Yeah. Well, she she did redshirt her true freshman year, so I had to clarify that one. Yeah, gotcha. Good, um, jo great job, coach. Hey, so thanks. you also get a bonus question. Okay. I'm ready. Can you give us the number of Alyssa's blocks per set in her freshman year? And Just if, her freshman year. Okay. If you're close, we'll give you the point. Blocks for the season. Solo blocks or total blocks? Blocks per set. Blocks per set. I'm gonna go with point nine. Point eight. 1.0. What? 1.2? Oh, I was way off. Wow, good job, Alyssa. 1.29. <laughs> 1 1.29, that's impressive. So you don't get the point. <laughs> That's okay, you got the. Yeah, got I the get first one. Line. That yeah. might be my first trivia I've missed, Eric. Is that the first one I've missed? Dang. Okay, I'm in the lead? Yep. Sweet. You're in the lead. I always take the lead over Coach Chow. Well, thank you so much for being Absolutely. with us. Absolutely. We wish Coach. you the best Thanks. On, your, on your new 52. New 52. Yeah. <laughs> 51. 51. Come on, don't get ahead of us. All right. Um, Time, uh, okay, so time for a break, but don't go anywhere. We'll keep the volleyball talking with senior um, mid uh, Allison, Alisa Kelly. So we'll be right back. I'm over it. We shouldn't need commercials to tell you we're powerful. No thanks. Genders don't play sports. Athletes do. I'm Kay van Heining, a junior court for the men's basketball team. So here's Stoudemire. That one is vehemently rejected by Kane van Heinegen. And you're watching the coach's corner. Get ready. All right. Uh, so glad uh, you're back with us. 
first of all. Um, and we want to remind you that all of the first Mug Club Happy Hour of the 2019-2020 season is coming up soon. It's actually taking place in September 6th from 5, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. from in right here, the Tivoli Tap House. If you're a Mug Club member, you great, uh, you great discount on beers, special invitations to events and events, um, and even the ability to enjoy their brewery brews at athletic events. Check out tivoliabrewingco.com for more information on how you can be the Mug Club today. Join the Mug Club today. So now we welcome our senior, our senior, Alisa Kelling. Hello. Hi. Thanks How's for it going, having Alyssa? me. Good. So um, we want to ask you. Uh, this is a question, and I um, mean, you're probably gonna get it wrong. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how many times have you been here on the coach's corner, or do you think you've been here? Maybe three. I'm gonna say three. <laughs> Oh, you're correct. Hey. And actually, you're the first one to ever be three times here. So wow. we want to celebrate. And we actually brought some cupcakes over here. Oh, my. <laughs> yes. Well, that there you is go. awesome. So you get the number three because it's special. Wow. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. You want to get one, two, Colton? <laughs> yeah, I'll have a cupcake. Sure. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Uh, so let's see. So what's the feel to be a senior now? Does that give you anxiety? Tell us about it. It's actually a really exciting. It sounds super cliche, but these past four years, so I'm a redshirt senior, um, have gone by so fast. And it's exciting, but also a little scary to know that it's all coming to an end. But I'm looking forward to this next season. That's great. So being the only, one of the only seniors on the squad, how does it feel, do you find yourself teaching the newbies and being a leader? Yeah, there is a lot of, since I have been here for the past four years, I know the coaches and I know their coaching style and I know what they're looking for. So a lot of our freshmen like to come to me and just ask for little tips on like what they should be doing or like certain situations. Um, but yeah, I do kind of find myself in that role. Awesome. Great. So what have you been working on during the summer? You know, it's been a big summer. So to keep up with the, the season, tell us about it. We do um, some team lifts. So the members of the team that are here will go and work out together. Um, we also play in a league together, which is a lot of fun. And we get touches and kind of get to still build that team chemistry um yeah so how much are you missing stephanie laraway this season <laughs> you two played a lot together at that middle blocker position. we did i do catch myself missing her quite often um she's just an amazing player but also an amazing person outside of volleyball um but our two freshmen um, we have Ember, who's a redshirt freshman, and then uh, Michaela is another middle blocker, and then we have Ava, who's our other middle blocker, and they're all phenomenal, so it's good. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, when the coach is talking to the six newbies on the squad, what is she telling them about the Roll Runners volleyball? What are the most important aspects of Coach Glenn's philosophy in your sport? Ooh, a tough question. Um, Really, Jenny just talks to them about how Metro has been traditionally a program that's been really successful. So we're looking to continue that, and all of the freshmen are extremely bought in and coachable, which is awesome to see. So Eric was telling us that your team looked to be having a great time at practice this morning. <laughs> um, is there a lot of camaraderie among the squad at this point in the season? There is, yeah. It's still super early on in our season, but it's crazy how fast you connect when you play a sport with other people. And we were lucky enough to be able to go on a retreat together and kind of build relationships outside of volleyball. So is there any other sport that you like? Mm -hmm. besides volleyball yeah i actually in high school i was on the soccer team as well so i'm a big fan of soccer oh okay what position did you play in soccer 
I started out defense and then I moved more into the midfield position. Midfield, midfield is a lot of running. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> Because I started as a goalkeeper, and then from goalkeeper I went to defense, and then from defense to midfield. Because you know it's a work in progress, running back mm -hmm. and forth. Yeah, so it's really hard. Do you have any favorite teams? I am a big Packer fan from Wisconsin, so big Packer football fan. Oh, okay. Okay. Are you excited for NFL to be starting up again? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say I'm as big of a fan of other teams and like watching it, but I'll definitely turn on the Packers when we have time. Awesome. That's great. So, um, well, thank you so much for being here with us. Yeah, thank you again. Thanks for the thanks cupcake, for the too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so um, that's going to be it for the episode. And we want to thank Coach Lara, Coach Glenn, and Alisa for being here with us, as well as my buddy over here. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. So I'm Hector Cervantes, and well, this is going to be it. Thank you so much. Join us next time. <laughs>